So, let me tell you something that you should have already realized by now about this fucking show you're listening to. This shit is supposed to be for mature audiences. As in grown-ups, mentally mature. It's supposed to talk about adult subjects, an adult frame of mind. It's not fucking that at all. This is two emotionally regressed, broken half-whips pretending to offer insight on movies. All they really offer you is an endless sexual perversion and a laundry list of personal paraphilia issues. You can make your own choices in life, but you have to choose this as entertainment. You know you're better than this. You have to know you are better than listening to Cinema Psyops. Consecutive week of Cinema PsyOps. I'm your host, Court, the guy who's just trying to get through another week recording over an hour and a half, maybe almost two hours late, thanks to my co-host, Matt! Well, I don't think you need to call me out like that. I'm I'm in next level issues, all right? So what the fuck happened? Like, you said you were having problems. Let's let the people know why uh, the show is yeah, late to no, me and not them. Uh, just fucking having issues with the fucking laptop just kept freezing on me freezing on me freezing on me when trying to watch this fucking movie so oh uh, so yeah and well this was <laughs> this this with was, constant amounts of trying to have breaks and shit and then i'm i also it took me a long time just to get to watch the movie because uh with renovations my basement was in shambles and i uh had to re-get my computer desk set up where i'm gonna just have it set up permanently and then i had to get all my wires 
wired around because it's not a place that's next to an outlet. So then I had to, you know, wire everything to get to an outlet. So good times. None of this was things that you had conveyed to me because you were too busy doing all of this. Yes, let's this is, let's let's, facts. let's air some more dirty laundry here, right? Like uh-huh. uh, we have someone coming to visit us. <laughs> yes, we know it's fucking COVID. This is horrible. They already had the trip planned. They have been isolating. They're making the choice to come stay with us, even though they have been isolating. So this is their their choice. But we're we're having a guest. We're having a house guest come. Yeah. And my wife is scrambling. And we were originally going to record this much later in the week. And my wife's like, No, no, we need to move that around. Can you move that around? See if you can move that around. I'm like, Oh, okay, I'll, I'll do that. So I get a hold of Matt and me being the diva, that I'm like, We got to do this tonight. Can you do this tonight? I guess we have to do this tonight. This is just how it's going to have to be, right? <laughs> and uh, I come to find out later, it's because um, the ladies had some kind of a thing planned where they're all going to go hang out anyway. And yeah. um, she moved it to tonight so that I wouldn't have an excuse to not help her on the other two nights to be ready to get the house in order for this guest who's coming is actually a lifelong friend of hers. Not I, I'm still fond of the person, too. I mean, I wouldn't let yeah. them stay here if I didn't at least like them a little bit. But um, but like so I think that's why my wife was so adamant about us moving things around. And then I didn't realize the amount of inconvenience that was putting on you for this. It's just well, I did what I was told to ask, you know? Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. And I know. And it's just that. Yeah. And I also I was just out of town. I also went traveling. Yes, I know. I'm terrible. COVID. Uh, but I am also vaccinated and masked up like a motherfucker to surprise my brother-in-law for his birthday. And um, uh, we actually only went there for a day. And it's a good amount of driving. And we came back late last night. Uh, we got in actually probably what you would consider early this morning. <laughs> so uh, I'm also dealing with that. Yeah, it's, instead of jet-legged, I am definitely car-legged. Yes. So this is going to be a really interesting episode because this is a very off-putting film. Um, I'm, the Fear I'm from 1995. <laughs> yeah, I can't really draw a bead on this film. Um, I can't either. I, I, was, I, I, I had a hard enough time getting into it. Now, I don't know. I, I would love to watch it again some other time when I'm not, like, rushing, but I'm, I'm still, I just have no idea if I'm, like, if that's the case or what, you know? Well, that's very interesting because I was convinced I had never seen this before. This, this was one of the films that came along with a package. There were some other oh, okay. movies that I wanted to get my hands on that the other versions of it had already sold out for one of these like sales for the company that did the release. And the only thing that was left was if I wanted to get the movies that I wanted, I had to basically buy a package, which was like not all of the releases, but like a certain group of them. And this was one that was included. I was familiar with the cover and I was convinced that I had never watched this movie. Right. Uh And then halfway through the movie, I'm like, holy shit. Yeah, I have seen this. (laughs) And like, then I started having this weird like flashback of when I actually rented it and like these weird memories started flooding back to me. So I I have some nostalgia wrapped in on this for watching it and then like a compare and contrast of immature asshole teenage court versus grown up grumpy old get off my lawn old fart court. I I will say this. Um, uh, that, um, I do know, like, I've always known this box for this movie, the box cover. Like, I remember seeing it when it first, and I was like, that's weird. The wooden dude, one, one of what fucking a wood dude is what killing people. What's up with that? Yeah. What's up with that doll <laughs> yeah. looking thing? Yeah. 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 I, so at least I remembered the, uh, box art. So, I it, mean, it was in was video stores everywhere in the nineties. You could not yeah. escape it. Like every video store had a copy of it or you ran across a video store that had a copy of it. You could you could tell you could see it you knew it was there you knew what it was like you it was everywhere uh (laughs) in just about every mom and pop shop they had a copy of the fear as well and for the longest time i was convinced this was a full moon movie but apparently it's not and i was like i've never seen that why have i never seen this full moon movie like there's so much stuff about it that i remember that it's not how it is that's not it's not true at all that 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 doesn't exist that way a very weird Wes craven sighting too did they have anything to do with this movie other than just that scene because i know he didn't direct it uh, I believe the fear getting into your brain and haunting your dreams and your nightmares and the surrealistic visions that were in Nightmare on Elm Street were a heavy influence on the fear and the writers and directors and producer all decided to pay homage by having Wes do a cameo. I got you then. That's well, then, that, that was my interpretation of it. I couldn't I look mean, at it I, any other way because he bookends the that's film. That's as good of a that's as good as a reason as anything I could really think of because I'm like oh. I see Wes Craven, and then I'm like, huh, did I miss where he's a director? No, I know. Maybe he's a producer. No. Maybe he wrote it. No. The fuck is Wes Craven doing over here? 
<laughs> yeah, it's like, it's it's a weird book end of the film. We're already starting in on the review, so maybe we should just fucking do the Legion Patreon ad and then we'll move on and we'll cover the fear from 1994. Uh, before we do get into all this, uh, for those of you that are on the uh, Patreon's Pirate Radio edit feed listening to this, I decided this week to choose songs that existed or were something that I would have been listening to in 1994-95 when this film was released. Uh, nice. So these are All like right. films that existed pretty much in the 90s, like either a year or two before or right at 1995 when this film was supposedly released. So when I would have been able to see it on video, I was definitely into these bands and listening to them. So that's the thing that I'm doing. And here's the Legion Patreon ad. This will keep you quiet. Oh, hi there. I didn't see you. You call me cutting a new show. I'm Bo Ransdell, and I'm one of the many creators you can find on Legion Podcasts. I said quiet. My fellow podcasters and I work hard to bring you the best in horror podcasting, but that comes at a cost. What's that like to live deliciously? Not that, but also, yes. No, what I'm getting at is that there are server costs, costs for good microphones and software for editing, all the things that make our shows, you know, fun to listen to. And you can help. If you're enjoying the shows on legionpodcasts.com, or in the Legion Network available on iTunes and Stitcher, just about anywhere you can download a podcast, really, you can help us out and get a little something for your trouble at patreon.com forward slash Legion Podcasts. For just two bucks a month, you get a pair of movie commentaries exclusive to Patreon, and for five dollars, you can also join us for a monthly screening of a movie. All of that available on patreon.com forward slash Legion Podcasts. We appreciate it, and thank you for listening. Now... Back to the cutting room. So that is Cheap by Machines of Love and Grace for those of you listening in on the Pirate Radio edit. And if you remember Machines of Love and Grace out there on something other than the Crow soundtrack, give me a shout out somewhere in the group on Facebook or, you know, Instagram or I don't know, fucking Twitter. Tweet it at me that you used to listen to Machines of Love and Grace. It's okay if you don't listen to them now. It's not the 90s, kids. That's right. Jesus. <laughs> Grow up. I still listen to them every now and then, but only for like that nostalgia kind of thing. And I make sure I keep my headphones on just like when I listen to this trailer. Imagine, if you will, an experiment in fear. It's going to be a field session. A place where you can explore your deepest and darkest fantasies. It's going to be a, a weekend of fear exploration in a controlled environment. You can explore your own fears as well. A weekend where you will learn to face your phobias. So it scares you, Leslie. Whether it's the fear of heights. Or of beckoning nightmares. Or won't go near the water. Whacking me out here. What's you afraid, man? Few more. There's someone or something. <laughs> something is wrong. <laughs> you know what happens to bad boys? Fear is whatever scares you the most.
Okay. Whatever scares you the most, that's the fear. All right. <coughs> All right. The first 20 minutes starts with a kid. Little kid, he's got a cut on his cheek, and he's watching these two men with wooden scary masks on burying a woman who's also wearing a wood mask. Um, We see this figure being carved out of a tree, and uh, they keep chanting... Uh, uh, Diuretics? Uh, no. Uh, dia- <laughs> it's diametrics. Diametric. It's diametric. Diamond. Um, it's, it's diamond something else that sounds like diametric, but it's basically the word um, diametric over and over again. But then they th- yeah. he thinks he's saying diamond. It sounds like diametric. I can't remember exactly what it yeah. was. I paid that little attention to what was going on with that. Well, now we see he's a young adult and he is talking with his professor. And that's our first clip. Diamond. Goofy, huh? How frequently are you having this dream, Richard? Uh, not often. A few times a year, I guess. Look, can, can we talk about my thesis? Oh, you know, I, I want to do more than just a, a dry academic rehash. Hold on a second, though. Let's go back to your dream. Play the shrink for me. Uh, what does this suggest to you? Oh, come on. Uh... Something buried, something underground, uh, the subconscious. Look, it's, uh, it's just some childhood boogeyman. Is it? Come on, don't Freud me out here, Dr. Arnold. Don't dismiss Freud. I mean, he might be dated, but he was no dummy. All right, well, there's no emotionally crippling trauma that springs to mind, if that's what you mean. Okay. Tell me about your thesis. Okay. Uh, It's going to be a field session. It's going to be a a weekend of fear exploration in a controlled environment. You could explore your own fears as well? Psychology is a spectator sport, Dr. Arnold. You know, the quest for wholeness is the holy grail of psychology. Young, right? I'll prove your uh, workshop. If you do one additional little assignment. Oh, boy. All right. What is it? Take that with you. Find the missing piece. (laughs) Oh. You're kidding, right? Half the people that become shrinks do so because they're in need of therapy themselves. You're aware of that, aren't you? Yeah. Good. Because that's the best reason. Wes Craven doing some really good acting here for Wes Craven. Certainly better than what he does in some parts of, from my memory, what I remember of how he acted in Wes Craven's New Nightmare. Uh, Yeah, right. (laughs) Because in this, he's just playing a psychologist and he's just kind of playing it straight. And that's just pretty much how Wes Craven talks. So the character was more or less written for him. Pretty much. Yeah. Um, All right. So uh, when we cut to it's nighttime in the campus, this lady's walking. She seems to be on edge and she runs into a security guard. Security guard tells her, hey, you know, be careful. We've had like seven attacks on campus. He wants to walk her to her dorm, but she says that's that's not necessary. So, of course, when you don't take someone wanting to walk you back to your dorm, uh, like protection from a security guard, what's going to happen is you're obviously going to get attacked in movie land. <clears throat> she does. And it's by a guy in a a cloak and kind of like a nylon mask. Uh, The next day, uh, Richard runs into his very cultural appropriating friend, Troy. This uh, this kid's entire personality is cultural appropriated. Yeah, this was um, this was a thing in the 90s. They were trying to push. This dude, the irritating white kid who refuses to accept the fact that they are not a black a kid. A person of a color. Yeah. Yes. But once Wearing to Wearing dreads. Yeah, once to usurp everything about that culture. This was this was uh epidemic in the nineties. Uh yeah. I grew up in the middle of nowhere with a population of less than who would give a fuck if we disappeared. Um yeah, yeah. <laughs> in the in the mountains in Pennsylvania. And I can promise you that there were people like this that were appropriating culture where I was growing up, even though if they actually saw a black person, they would probably hate them and scream obscenities at them. Or or be so afraid they'd pee themselves and lock the door or whatever. Right, right, right. But this was this was a problem. It did exist in the nineties and it's captured here beautifully on film. Yeah. Uh, well, they also two detectives show up to talk to him. Apparently, Troy's ex-girlfriend was the girl attacked and raped on campus the night before. Troy said he was out playing pool 
and they said they'll check out his his uh, uh alibi. Uh well then uh Richard tells him that he should come to tells Troy he should come with him to their little thing and he goes, Troy's I'm not really afraid of anything and then he sees a bee buzzing around and he gets freaked out and he's like, Eh, well, that's a lie. You should come with us. So the next day the group's all there, a bunch of people, and Troy actually brings his older foster sister and her creepy ass fucking younger boyfriend. They make a pit stop where Troy really uh he kind of like grills his foster sis about life and like, he hasn't heard from her. And she said she lost her job and they're just kind of going around and the, you know, the creepy younger boyfriend's really combative towards, well, just about everybody. Uh, they then get to this cabin where, uh, that Richard's family had owned. And Richard, you can tell, he's very nervous, very uncomfortable there. But Richard and his girlfriend, uh, they start going through the main room and she's like going on about how, you know, the kids can be happy there once they're married, all that. She seems she's ready to be married with kids right now. Can I just chime in here for a second? Yeah. This talk that she had going on about how they're going to name the kids after him and one yeah. of their sons could sleep in this room and she lays out this whole entire, like, next 20 years of their life plan yeah man was i shriveling up like you would not believe in one oh, to fucking die for that guy it creeped me out <laughs> don't do that <laughs> stop especially if you're in college don't plan out the next 20 years of your life to your boyfriend at the time because it's not gonna go well not usually yeah and the minute you start mentioning how you want to have kids that's definitely the minute that i'm going to second guess whether or not i want to have sex with you yeah right oh jesus <laughs> you are not wrong <laughs> i started getting very uncomfortable very fast and like everybody in this film has got issues and you realize that really quick because you got overly aggressive man who who's constantly irritated by everything that has a significantly older than him uh, love interest who just so happens to be the foster sister of the asshole cultural appropriation guy. But there's also some kind of weird baggage going on with him and his foster sister. Uh, his sister. Am I getting this right so far that they're trying to tell yeah. us? Yeah, yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Everyone's got prom. Okay, and I just want to say that I'm seeing through this whole foster family thing. Yeah. Right I mean, off the fucking bat. Right. They're not, there's not a lot here that's surprising you. All right. You're not going to get shocked in this movie a lot. Uh, but I do want to say this. Um, what they're doing so far and how they're trying to develop these characters and how they're giving every single actor these moments to just really feel what they're feeling and stretch and try and do some things is very much like a play uh, where they're really trying to project their feelings. And I think it helps if you can be further away from it and not in the scenario that you were watching this in, because I can tell you the first time I watched it, I was probably in the exact same frame of mind that you were in. I was super oh. fucking tired and really, really irritated and it wasn't playing right. Yeah, uh, maybe. Yeah. I mean, holy shit. Yeah, no, there's a reason um, why I only remember part of this film, and that's because the videotape was fucked up. So I didn't see any of this stuff at the beginning. I had to fast forward past all the fucked up stuff so it would stop getting eaten. So I've only ever seen half of it before this jesus christ um <laughs> which is why i didn't remember it until the back yeah half. well um well there uh and he wants to of course he's telling her i want to build my practice get set and you know all that kind of stuff before we begin this life you know i want to be able to pay for it um and he also says he, he says something about how that's not what he wants to like he just says it slyly at her and she doesn't notice it and then he just keeps moving on and tries to misdirect her from this yeah well then he, you know she looks around around the room while he, after he leaves and finds a very unhappy looking family photo with him as a boy, his mom and a unhappy looking dad and then this figure in the window um, then she kind of opens up her drawer and she finds a wooden man in there and this frightens her and the others come in running. Richard says that they named this figure Morty and it used to be his grandpa's shop, you know you would wear clothes, you know, like a mannequin but then after the sh shop closed down, they must have brought it up here to protect the house and that's the end of the first 20 minutes okay first of all the murphy bed that slides into a wall from nowhere uh that they have there where they just pull it out and then all of a sudden boom bed that was super fucking cool in a cabin i can see where you would need that for convenience sake to be able to push the uh, bed out of the way and have more room you know for like activities and whatnot um yeah really cool idea <laughs> Hiding, we have so much more room for activities. Right, hiding a fucking mannequin in 
a bed that's like a Murphy bed like that, uh, you're just begging to cause a heart attack to do that to somebody. Yeah. And then also keeping a mannequin like this in your cabin and only in your cabin is also creepy as fuck. Um, considering some of the behavior that has happened in the first 20 minutes on this trip and considering the ways that some of these people are behaving, including the person who's about to conduct psychological experiments on everyone for a thesis for his college graduation, uh, I, I'm screaming all sorts of red flags where I'm like, we need to get the fuck out of here. And by we, I mean anyone who is within the sound of my voice and agrees with me at this exact moment. Yeah. <laughs> Cause, yeah, let's all leave. Yeah. Let's get the fuck out. So the film has got heart. It is trying real hard to get you to like these characters or to get you engaged with them. It's trying to develop nuance. It's trying to show you all of this stuff. But I would submit to you that they have about one couple too many to pull this off and they need to get rid of perhaps like one of the non-couple people too. Like we need to keep this to like two, maybe three couples, but then the couples then lose identities as individuals and they just become a couple identity where we learn about them as a couple in the film. Because we've got like an hour and 40 minutes in this specific film to get to know these people. And this film being so ambitious is trying to show everything and teach us all sorts of these different things about these interpersonal relationships between these foster children that were brother and sister, apparently as foster kids, um, this foster sister and her very clearly overwhelmed, tight, psychotic type boyfriend who just really stares everybody down all the time, even on the fucking van ride. <laughs> the psychology student who clearly has issues of his own. If Wes Craven is the one who is, uh, is teaching him right yeah right like that should be sending warning bells off to all horror fans that something's not right about all of this yeah. <laughs> and and like then the the would-be girlfriend that's there just for support but doesn't want to participate in the experiment is also like doing all this marriage talk and like just developing this entire life and it's all just there on the tip of her tongue like she just looks around this cabin and immediately lays out the next 20 years of her life creating a family and, yeah. and I'm just like Jesus Christ that's intense lady like it's just every Everything is just super sensory overload, and they're really trying to jam pack so much character to get to know all of these people all, at all of this time. And I mean, they're doing okay. Like, they've got a lot of fucking plates to juggle. But here's the problem some of the plates are a little oiled, and it's kind of yeah, right? it's kind of obvious that this isn't this is not going to be able to maintain. Like at this point in time, they're doing okay. And yeah, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna see it later, but some of these plates are gonna get lost by the wayside and they're they're gonna crash, they're gonna burn, and then we're gonna kind of wonder what happened with that because you you don't have enough time for this many people. And uh, I'm not the only one that has that criticism of the film. Actually, I watched the documentary, the behind the scenes uh, sort of documentary, and the main actor who plays the psychology student said that he recently watched the film. And if the one complaint that he had is that there's so many characters and they try to develop so much stuff that they couldn't quite get all of the nuance that they were trying to do. So as soon as he said that, I'm like, oh, so I think that's an ample complaint to sort of have about the film or a little criticism to say that, you know, it's ambitious. They really, really tried, but that's, you know, and ensembles are difficult to pull off. You know, very yeah. few people can actually do it and to do it and then try and mix it in with horror is even more so ambitious and difficult. And I, I kind of admire what it is that they're trying for. And like, I know they might not swing it out of the park. You know, we might be getting a foul tip on this, but like as that ball's starting to go in, I'm just starting to believe that they're going to swing for the fence either way. And I'm kind of like going to root for them to like have it pay off. You know, that's that's where I'm at at this 20 minutes, because I'm like, wow, this feels kind of low budget. And it is this wood. Yeah. This wood guy's kind of creepy. So that's an interesting visual thing. Everybody that's in this party is a little unhinged and they're going to they're going to then go on psychological experiments with each other where they're going to start experimenting with each other about fear. So, you know, that's a, a recipe for disaster already at a cabin. Just you've seen the horror movies. So of course. they're building up the tension and we're just sort of getting there. And I'm, I'm willing to give it a shot at this point. But I will say that th at this point, they have a lot of plates to juggle and some of them are oiled. And it's obvious that some of them are going to be oiled here real soon. Well, I'm not giving nobody a goddamn shot. So anyway, <laughs> you call me, I'm sick and I don't care. So we start the next 20 minutes and decide they're going to use Morty as the person to listen to the, their fears. He won't judge or anything. Well, Troy says his fears bug. Uh, his sister says that her fear is getting older. Creepy boyfriend says his fear is poverty. His girlfriend's turn, but she doesn't want to do it. Uh, so she runs out, and as Richard follows her to talk to her, uh, all of a sudden his Uncle Pete and his young girlfriend show up to the house. His house got snowed out, and while they're digging it out, they gotta stay with them. So then they kind of take place in it, and Lady Friend lets... Uh, Morty know that her she's fear she's a fear of water. The uncle 
Well, he's scared of some sort of anti Santa. Black that's, Peter. That yeah, that's yeah, a yeah. that's a troubling name, but it is a name that has existed for a very very long time. I think is it Swedish? Or, yeah, I'm it's Scandin- I know it's, it's some type Krampus, of so it's some type of Scandinavian tradition where um he travels along with the uh, other anti Santa, like what you would consider Krampus. But yeah. he does say Black Peter, and he says it quite a bit, and it's yeah. uncomfortable to say the least. Yeah. That's why I didn't say it. But okay. <laughs> so just just say Krampus Light from here on out. <laughs> Krampus Light. Diet Krampus. Um Well Diet so, just has less calories, but all the same punch as Krampus. Then there's another couple there, one who's seen their couple, and the guy He's kind of more straight-laced, while the girl's more artsy. I call her Hippie Lady. And Hippie Lady, she's scared of heights. And she says she doesn't recall any time in her current life, she says, that she's ever had a problem, but maybe in one of her past lives. And her boyfriend, he's a preacher's son. He thinks this is all bullshit. But secretly, he's scared of religion because his father was a a religious zealot asshole. Of course. I mean, duh. So anyway, um, then uh, Richard's about ready to get moved on. But then they call him out, and that's our next clip. Okay, well, um, I guess that's it for today. Tomorrow we'll start up on those individual cases. No, 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 baby. Not yet, man. We ain't really scared you yet, Freud. No, 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 no. I have no fears. I'm all knowing. I'm therapy, man. No, baby, no. no. Yeah. Have sweet. Have sweet. Have sweet. What about your fear of marriage? Yes. Oh, no. That's right. You're the man. You're on, baby. Come on. All right. Hi. 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 All right. I have a fear of commitment, I'll admit it. My mom died here, in this house, when I was a kid. She was pregnant, so it was a double loss. Everything fell apart then. My dad and I, we, uh, we couldn't look each other in the eye after that. I don't know why. So he sent me away. You know, it all boils down to, uh... Diamond trick. Diamond trick. What? Diamond trick. Diamond trick. Yo, man, you're whacking me out here. What you afraid of, man? For you, Morty. You scare the shit out of me, man. I don't know why. I know why it scares him. <laughs> bitch. No. Wow. Toxic also, masculinity. I know, right? And also, Morty's a creepy fucking wooden statue. I think that would creep anybody out. It's not weird why it creeps him out. Okay. Um, diamond <laughs> trick is the thing that you and I could not remember. I feel a diamond lot dumber. Trick. Diamond trick. I couldn't remember that. All right. Yeah. Diamond trick. I thought it was something, really something else. So. Yeah. Well, I thought he said diabetic at first. <laughs> And I thought he said diametrics. <laughs> and he does say diametric once yeah. or twice, but then the kid says diamond trick, and then it keeps going back to diamond trick. And then they keep playing know, around man. with it to what they think. It- Somebody clearly was really into David Lynch before they made this movie. Yeah, right. I don't, something's going on around here. So anyway, um, then the hippie lady and the creepy boyfriend uh, of the other woman, they start like flirting actually a bit. And she wants to draw him, but he gets real serious and says, don't draw me at all. Then uh, she starts, like, kind of disrobing because they're talking about how she's a nude model for artists. And then there's Seneca and others show up, break it up, and uh, that's just all sorts of awkward. Yeah, that was really, really bizarre because she's playing a game with him, yet he's very serious and very gross. And I think she's just trying to minimize him and torment him a little bit because she's like, thinks he's gross. Like, it feels it feels like she's taunting him, basically, because he's kind of coming on to her. But, like, he's reading it in the completely wrong way, and that's the part that makes it feel gross. Yeah. Because like something. he's he's really thinking, oh man, she must really be into me, you know? And like it's kind of clear that she's not. Like you can tell. Yeah. Either way, it's fucking it's a weird dynamic there. And yeah, just <laughs> fucking it's not right. <laughs> right. Just because a woman's like, you know, flashing her top off at you, she doesn't mean she's that into you, my man. Just yeah, yeah. Realize he, that. But you know, I don't think he doesn't seem like he's the type who cares if they're into him or not. That's the part where it becomes gross. Yeah. Of course. 
So, uh, then we cut to uh, Richard and his lady. They're talking, and that's our next clip. Thanks for not putting me in the hot seat tonight. Sure. Diamond trick. Yeah. Diamond trick, yeah. I've tried every combination. I, I don't know. What if it just sounds like diamond trick? What do you mean? What if it's just one word? Diamond trick. Diamond. Diamond trick. Diamond Diametric. It, it comes from the Greek. It means the opposite of. Yeah, yeah. Diametric. Diametric. Di- opposite of what? I don't know. <laughs> it's your dream. So they kind of get an explanation, but not really. More mysteries. So anyway, um, then we cut to the older sis and her creep boyfriend. Uh, they bone, and but he's like, "Can we turn the lights off?" She's or turn the lights on, and she's like, "No, lights stay off." And then she has a shit ton of makeup caked on her face for it, and he's just fucking annoyed by all that shit. But they still bone. Uh, this is a weird exchange. This is very awkward, and um. They are now losing the plates that they were keeping spinning for character development. And here we see things crash down where they are shortcutting her character by just establishing that she's all about her appearance. She's terrified of the fact that she is at the age she's at now and trying to find quote unquote love and have it all because she's had to quote unquote put her life on hold because of the little brother that she was stuck with because they were in foster care together or something. And then Mm -hmm. she started taking care of him and it's not fully fleshed out, but uh, she won't let him see her in the light and she cakes on a bunch of makeup and then he's kind of a prick about it and by kind of i mean definitely you know like he needs to be a little more supportive of someone that he supposedly loves you don't talk to someone that you care about that way that's for goddamn sure i think it's pretty obvious he doesn't care about her no uh, but yeah they're shortcutting it here and i would argue that their particular plate as a couple the storyline that would be contained on that plate they're trying to keep spinning as a couple has fallen and cracked and broken and they've just shortcutted it too they're just going to be fighting and breaking up because their relationship is strained and based on something other than mutual love and affection and attraction there's something else going on with these two and this is the shortcut they make on them yeah um well we come back to rich and his girlfriend in bed and she's cuddling him and she's like hey you all right and he goes well this is my mom's room and she's trying to talk him into you know it's your house now well then they start to get down and dirty but then we see a silhouette in the window where she looks up and it's fucking morty staring at him Rich is pissed. He thinks it's a uh, he, Troy. Something Troy did. He finds Troy. Troy's like, "Hey, I was, doing, I was just snacking. I didn't do anything." Hey, I'm just uh, over here I, eating Cheetos and appropriating culture, bro. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I didn't have time to put a new fucking uh, mannequin up against your window. But Rich doesn't believe him. He's he, and he walks off thinking it was Troy, and that ends that twenty minutes. All right, we already kind of talked about it with the uh, plates spinning and the couple with the would be sister foster. sister sister that's older and stuff like and then her development as a character is just shortcut to she's afraid of getting old and she's afraid of missing things and then he's just this weird violent psychopath that is just hitched his wagon to her because it's easier and that's just the shortcut yeah. they took on him uh we do see some stuff where they're shortcutting our main character who's supposed to be running this experiment they very quickly and very curtly just sideload in his massive mommy issues the minute he starts talking about his mom and he's all curled up in bed like he looks yeah. like a little kid and then the way she's snuggling him it's like she's trying to comfort a kid who's scared of a thunderstorm like uh-huh. that's the way that that scene is framed and like that's how i was interpreting it, and that's how i was looking at it was like like he is regressed in that exact moment and like turned her into like a mother figure because he still has mother issues yeah. <laughs> and i'm like okay so this film's trying to go a little bit more with the psychology i mean they're really driving it home but they're they're trying this shot's really composed well. I'm digging this, you know? I was like, this, this is clearly some, you know, early filmmakers kind of fleshing some stuff out and having, you know, some experimenting with this. And it's a little artsy and it's a little weird, but everything's kind of, you know, it's getting there. And I'm like, okay, they're shortcutting this now with, <laughs> you know, this traumatized youth and they're going to throw in some mommy issues there. And they kind yeah. of red herring him here a little bit too. A little, yeah. 
seems like awfully um, mommy issues. Mm, having problems moving on. Mm, seems awful like some, uh, somebody who's uh, terrorizing a campus would say. Just saying. Right, and we already know that at one point in time, someone on campus has been terrorizing young women. Um, yes. There has been a series of sexual assaults. They've kind of already said that. But that's part of the reason yeah. why they're getting away, too, is they just want to get off campus away from that. Yeah. Well, Jesus. Anyway, start of the next 20 minutes. Uh, Richard, he's working with Mindy, the hippie air lady, on her fear of heights. And she is like this drawing of tracks. And he tells her, you know, she says that this person, if she keeps climbing this ladder, she's kind of hypnotized, will be angry with her. And he's like, draw him, draw him. And what she draws looks like fucking Morty, doesn't it? A little bit, but I mean, it feels very much like Evil Dead, doesn't it? The original Evil Dead. Yeah, yeah. But it looks like it's Morty. Um, I'm sure it's supposed to be Morty. I'm just not playing along. Yeah. Um, Then uh, we cut to Uncle Pete's trying to get uh, Tanya, his girlfriend, into the hot tub. You know, get her over her fear of water. Well, he's really pushing her, really pushing her. And so then Richard shows up and he's like, wow, you're really damaging her. Let me. And he's trying to help her. Well, then Ashley, his girlfriend, shows up. She's like, hey, are we going to go out and do this thing? He goes, well, not right now. He goes, I'm, I'm in the middle of trying to help someone. And this pisses Ashley off. Uh, can um, I get a ruling on how selfish she was being there? Uh, who, Ashley? Yeah. Yeah, hugely selfish. That girl, Tanya, was bawling her eyes out and was just being emotionally scarred. Right. Uh, his equivalent of trying to help her, the, the uncle, his idea yeah, of trying to help her is the equivalent of the father throwing the kid in the deep end of the pool and saying, now swim. Exactly. Very much so. Yeah, that doesn't work, Dad. Yeah. Man, hey, listen, Ashley, if this is how you're going to be, I don't even know if I would want kids with you because it's like, fuck. How are you going to act with them if they're, like, getting in the way of, like, a vacation you want to take or something? Exactly. You were you beat me to it. Go right ahead. So then uh, Uncle Pete takes Richard aside, starts telling him to mind his own business. You know, he's like, worry about your woman. I'll worry about mine. And Ta- we see Tanya listening to that. So then Tanya decides she's going to try to get over to this on her own. And she gets into the water and she actually gets in. And you don't want much to I'll give Ashley some credit. Ashley actually looks very happy to see Tanya getting over this kind of fear. And she's like, hey, you're doing really good. And Tanya's sitting in the water. She's pretty happy about herself. And then all of a sudden, Morty pops out. This freaks her out. And Tanya starts thrashing in the water. And Pete and Richard get there. They help her out. Rich kind of accuses Ashley of putting him in there. She's like, you're the only other person here. And so she takes off her engagement ring that he gave her and gives it back to him. Because, yeah, that's a little bullshit. You may not want to all of a sudden just right away, you know, accuse your future wife of that kind of sabotage. Okay, now that I know that they are actually somewhat engaged, even though they're, you know, ending yeah. college, um, her talk of marriage and kids and everything is her looking forward to their future because they're engaged and she doesn't seem so creepy, but they should have made it more obvious earlier they were engaged. It wasn't until well, she takes off the ring that we realize they're engaged, right? Yeah, and I didn't think she was creepy talking about it, but I think she was being forceful when I think they've had this conversation. He's like, the world doesn't work on just you know, laughter and fuzzy times. He goes, we need money to do all these things you want to do. Unfortunately, the just... evil of capitalism demands that I sacrifice units of time of my life in order to have funding to keep the rest of you alive. Exactly. And I think so. She looks at this, the the fact that he already owns a home, like he has this beautiful home. The, uh, like, oh, well, we're just ready to do it now. I mean, the hardest part of life is over. He, we own a home, <laughs> you know, it's like, well, you know, that's not exactly it, but okay. <laughs> yeah, and they're they're shortcutting their relationship here with this breakup. They're shortcutting the fact that um you know, everything that's happening here, their plate, they're like, Okay, well we can't maintain this story as them being a couple and we want to explore them individually, so let's break up this couple, right? Yeah. So then this plate of their relationship is just smashed. They let that one go. And then now the plates of the individual characters, we're going to see what's going on. And then whenever they finally go slasher movie for it, then they can let those plates break as well. And I mean, this is a very delicate thing to try and do when you're doing with storytelling. I am not going to argue if you tell me you feel that it works or not. Like, that's that's fine. I am just really enjoying the craft of what they're attempting here. And I'm actually enjoying, while the actors may not be, um, like, you know, really doing like 
top-notch, amazing work. They're doing very solid, very believable work that for a horror movie in the 90s, at least, if you see some of the stuff that this was up against in the 90s, this has a lot more emoting. This has a lot more depth to it. And I can see where these actors would really dig in and try and do. There's a lot of like monologues and like, I was born the poor merchant's son, you know, and shit like that. Yeah. Like, like they're really digging in and like really giving us speeches and discussing their lives and like really trying to emote and like really give. And like, you can really see the actors really digging into this and having some fun. Even cultural appropriation guy is really trying to make his asshole nineties character who is in like every fucking nineties movie appropriating culture, like really trying to make him have some depth and nuance, but like the film's just not giving it the room to do this. And they need to make up their mind. Like, is this a relationship (laughs) sort of drama film or is this a horror film? Because they, they can't have it both ways. And that's the other two plates they're trying to spin, right? Like what genre are we in right now? (laughs) Exactly. I mean, there's, it's this, you can't argue with me that this film is not ambitious as fuck. And I can, and I cannot argue with you whether or not it's good. Yeah. (laughs) Like, right. That's not what I'm here to discuss. I'm just the fucking balls to put all of this on film and like, try and keep all of this story going and like, have your cast do all this shit. Like it's, it's mesmerizing to me and let's, let's keep going. Right. (laughs) Right. Yeah. So later on, uh, Tanya asks if he can speak, she can speak to Rich alone. And they go down, uh, and they talk. And apparently, she says her fear was always because, uh, she almost drowned, but really it's because her favorite uncle had killed himself and she had tried to go into the water to get him out. Um, so anyway, Rich actually helps her with kind of her fear of water, helping her. And then she feels very nice and she, uh, tries to kiss him, but he turns away. Uh, later on, creepy boyfriend dude, he tries to, uh, he, Mindy's taking a bath and he actually starts feeling her up in the bath and she thinks it's her boyfriend, Gerald. So when she opens her eyes, sees him, she slaps him and he threatens her saying, you know, you'll pay for that. Uh, dude, you just sexually assaulted her. That's, that's assault. Yeah, right. Exactly. I, I agree. Uh, this man uh, should be going to prison. Yes. Yes. It, like, uh, uh, instantaneously he should be going to prison. Like, forever. So anyway, later on, Mindy and her boyfriend, Gerald, are heading into the room, and they turn on the light, and they see that Morty's been pretty much put in the crucified position. Um, so, yikes. Well, later on, they all get together as a group, and they talk about it in our next clip. Guys, I'm serious. There is something weird going on, and it has to do with Morty. Mindy, please. What, where did he come from? What, did he, what do we know about him? My grandfather hired some old Indian guy to carve him. I guess that was back in the early 20s, wasn't it? To talk to him. The local bullshit artist. Claimed to be a powerful shaman, but the, his tribe died of the smallpox, so he wasn't so powerful after all, was he? Is there anything else? So Tate said with a, when Morty wore clothes in the shop window, people would be compelled to come in and buy. He said he'd work some magic into the wood. You mean he worked into his wood? <laughs> <laughs> I heard that. Oh, no, 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 I mean, I'm serious. I talked to his grandson once. Hey, look, there's no magic going on around here. It's just a lot of bad blood and cruel jokes. Now, if you kids are smart, you pack your shit and get out of here. Later on, Troy uh, talks to uh, Ashley outside, and he pretty much starts slamming on Richard, saying he never deserved her, all this kind of shit, and then he's an asshole. And I was like, wow, oh, oh, all right, I guess there's no... Uh, no, no, uh, no honor amongst thieves over there for these guys, right? Uh, knowing what we know now, uh, yeah. upon finishing the film, this behavior is not a surprise. But at first, this uh, quick heel turn from fun loving dipshit to double side out the side of your mouth talking about it, a friend to try and get with his ex like two seconds after the corpse starts to cool, if you yeah. know what I'm saying, when the relationship ends, like this is some pretty heinous shit this dude's pulling here. Yeah, yeah, this is uh this is some thievery of uh of the the highest kind. Yeah. <laughs> Right, like, this is one fucking fight where they say it's over. They, you know, this isn't necessarily the absolute end, and he's swooping in like a goddamn vulture at the first scent of corpse. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty bad. It's some heinous shit, so, yeah. So anyway, the uncle's having uh, some breakfast with Tanya, and he sees this, and he kind of is like, hey, you know, fuck this kid, but you know what? This breakfast can wait. We gotta show these people good time. Whatever that's supposed to be. So then we cut to Troy and 
Ashley, Troy's like, yeah, you know, the only reason I went out with this one person is because of you. You know, I thought I could just get close to you. And they kind of flirt a little bit more. And then all of a sudden they uh, start making out. Okay. Uh, yeah. And uh, then Ashley stops that make out session. And um, she just rushes away and she tries to get away. And Troy actually gets a little too rapey there and he started going hey what's going on but she she gets away from him inside and before anything else can happen uncle comes out in his santa gear and says hey we're uh we're taking you guys to christmas land because that's where he works and you're like well fuck it i okay i guess hey Mother- we saw a christmas land when they were on their way to the cabin we know that it does exist there was a sign on the side of the road and he's going to take them to it apparently he works there or somehow the family has something to do with that too they must own that property i guess yeah something yeah and apparently Uh, it was closed down at the time so like maybe they're just gonna go trespassing there yeah right uh i mean if if you got it shoot there right like if it increases the look of your budget if you got it shoot there yeah i guess right they all get to christmas land and and richard wants to take ashley looking around but she reaffirms that no uh that's not gonna happen uh you know we're we're still very much broken up so sorry about your luck so the place is really weird. It's like one of those kind of, you know, places that's supposed to be like a small town, fun loving attraction, but ends up being creepy. Uh, yeah, that's basically where I grew up. Yeah. 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 Uh, when I was a kid, Wisconsin Dells was a lot like that. Things that were supposed to be fun little, like, hey, look at all this, turned out to be creepy. Now they've changed it to all just water parks, but. Back then, they used to have attractions as well. There was actually a uh, old school, like storybook forest style um, attraction for kids, where they had like little huts and things that they could go play in, like those kinds of theme park attractions, like without any rides or anything that existed. It was long since disused and closed down, but it was in the woods between my house and that cemetery that used to terrify me for Night oh, of the Living wow. Dead. You want to know why I love horror films? There was an abandoned theme park just through the woods from my house that. I could kind of see. And then on the other side of it was a fucking cemetery. That was what my, got my imagination going as a kid. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, I'm, uh, you know, anything with like creepy theme parks, I'm there for all day. And to have it be a Santa Claus one, you know, like abandoned theme park or an abandoned Santa yeah. Claus theme park, you immediately get the creep factor going on this. They get so much bang for their buck with this. this, yeah, this they really do. Yeah. This is finally getting us from a drama into a horror film. We're focusing in on the horror now a little more <laughs> all right so um uh the old sister there she wants to ride the carousel but the boyfriend's a dick tells her to act her age and like holy shit you are a real asshole um and uh so then they uh but you know the get on the carousel she's like instantly hitting her inhaler she's having a hyper you know she's hyperventilating because they kind of just broke up and um then we cut to Mindy is looking for Gerald, but then runs into the creep and leaves. Then she she keeps hearing Gerald's voice calling for her, so she hops on this little train. And then she's, like, really uncomfortable on the train. Nothing seems to be uh, going right. And all of a sudden we see this figure come out. She thinks it's Gerald. She goes to look, and then she is also attacked. Uh, then we see Gerald's walking around. He gets called into, like, this, like, fucking little house thing by a figure in the window. Then we go to Richard Troy walking around, and they find Mindy wandering around, and we find out she has been attacked and raped. We did see her get grabbed by someone with a gloved hand. Yeah. 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 Um, so that's, that's not good. Uh. I like that the movie tastefully, they show us her being grabbed. We know that that was a human being and not the fear or what was happening to her whenever she was thinking she was seeing things. That was actually a person who physically grabbed her. And we now find out the aftermath of what happened without actually having it being to be shown. Although I don't think we really need to include this, but you know, it's part of the storyline that they just started on the campus. And this is something that they've just decided to bring as a through line. So now we're going to bring this in with another plate. <laughs> we're going to spin. Yeah. Because because oh, now we have to figure out which character is the campus rapist that's come along because this is what we just found out. It's yeah, exactly. one of the men here. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So um, as they're all getting her uh, out of the place, Ashley accuses, of course, one of the men of being the campus rapist. Well, clearly um, a rapist is among them. So yeah. uh, that's somewhat justifiable where she says it has to be one of you guys. They must be one. She said the campus rapist must have come here. She doesn't outwardly yeah. say one of you. She just says it must be one of you. It has yeah. to be because this happened. Yes, exactly. 
Um, so anyway, um, then, uh, so, um, the creep comes out and he's mad. He says, you told, you told, he's telling the sister. She goes, no, I didn't, no, I didn't. And then he brings out a gun and drives off in one of the Jeeps. And they ask her what the fuck's going on. And she admits the reason she got fired from her job was because she, uh, they stole twenty two hundred thousand dollars And, uh, that was, uh, that was, uh, her boyfriend's idea. And that ends at 20 minutes. All right. So we're starting to spin even more plates. The reason that the, uh, boyfriend and the would be sister, foster sister, way too old to be just a foster sister lady stole some money. That's why she got fired. Uh, the campus rapist is apparently one of the men on this trip. (laughs) Yeah. And it would have to be one of the two who came from the actual college. Was there a third male that came from the college? Because there's three girls uh, and there's three girls and two guys. It was Gerald. Three guys. There's three nope, guys. No, just the three guys. Yeah. yeah, just the three guys from the the actual place. Yeah. Right. So, and you could almost rule out her own boyfriend <laughs> as a possible Not campus really. campus rapist. I think he could withhold the compulsion for the weekend. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? You could almost probably you think, but you never know with this one. I'm just saying. <laughs> right. I mean, yeah, the way that this movie's going, you don't know, but like in in reality's terms, you probably wouldn't suspect that that would be the yeah. case. You know what I mean? You wouldn't think so. Yeah. Right. Um I don't this film is just like it's so fucking ambitious. It just keeps piling on more stuff that it keeps trying to do, and it keeps spinning more stuff in the air, but then when we realize we haven't really touched on the relationship with the artist and her guy at all, they've kind of taken taken a, a backseat to what has just happened now where we bring in the campus rapist theme. So like her character development is gone because now they've just transformed her into a victim so they don't have to write her anymore. Yeah, right. Yeah, pretty much. So yeah, they fridged but, her for the rest of the movie because she spends the rest of the movie in somewhat of a comatose state, right? She's, she's kind of already dead. If you want to think about it. I mean, right? Yeah. I mean, they pretty much just put her in bed. Like, and it's like, I mean, from what, what happens here later. (laughs) So it's the soap opera solution in that they put her in a coma so they don't have to write her character for a while. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Pretty much. I mean, let's let's be honest about this. Um, also, we really need to talk about this. The psychology in this is not good. <laughs> um, no. It's ropey at best. Um, the writer, one of the writers actually admits that and says that in the documentary that came along with the disc. Huh. So um, I just want to point that out, uh, that I was feeling that. And then to hear him say it in the documentary, I'm like, good, cool. Somebody somebody else saw that, too, and they actually were one of the writers, so I'm good. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> like, now we're fine. That's I, I didn't get to finish that documentary that came along with it, but I really was like kind of enjoying it, you know? And huh. um, I like that uh, the complaints that I would have about the movie and the things that I would say about the movie, like everybody in the cast and the crew, they're all acknowledging it. And they're just, you know, like we did the best we could. <laughs> we did we did we did what we could. We're we're sorry, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it's not quite that much humility, if you will, but like it's still yeah. kind of softened my edges a little bit, is what I'm saying. Oh, well, there you go. I mean that's still nice. Uh sh- Oh, Jesus Christ. All right, so start the next 20 minutes, the creep gets back to the house, and he's mad because he can't find the money. He's just, well, we're, we're, you know, he just doesn't know where any of the money is, and so he's pretty fucking pissed off. Um, Then all of a sudden he sees a dollar, or uh, not a dollar, a hundred dollar bill, and then another hundred dollar bill, and it's a trail that leads to, like, this trap door that he opens, and there's all the cash, but then he gets dragged in there by something, and violently. Uh, it smashes of- on his head until it nearly decapitates yeah. him, or just basically kills him and then drags his body through yeah that was uh, badass so, he deserved that, that was pretty cool yeah oh yeah he's an asshole so then pretty much uh the rest of the peeps get back and they're looking for the guy but they can't find him and while they're looking we see him outside very dead the phone is not working and they run outside and see the tires are flat on the van so all of this isn't good this is a uh these are this is bad stuff happening here so tanya says she because she's a good runner she will run to chris land because there's a truck there uh our uh pete says he'll go with her as long as uh you know he can uh he'll go with her but you'll have to walk um ashley then says knows it's one of the three dudes who's the rapist because it could have been the other guy you know the creepy boyfriend well then the sis finds uh troy and they talk and that's our next clip unless i've been rough on you and i want to um i'm sorry I'm a big girl, I can take it. Look, I know you had to run out on me back then and live your own life and shit, and 
It ain't right for me to be this in your floor all the time. You know what I'm saying? Hey, I made things so tough on you. God, you don't know how hard it was for me. There wasn't a day that went by that I wasn't thinking about you. Oh, God, I felt like a piece of me had been ripped out. And I had done the ripping. But we found each other again. You know what? It ain't too late for us. You know? I love your face, Les. Let's start, please. Let's don't give me that sister rap. That shit sounded good around the homeboys, but Les, we only related because Nan adopted us both. She didn't adopt us. She owned us. Well, that don't mean nothing. Les, leave the baby alone. We don't want another mess on our hands, young lady. What the fuck you saying, Les? I don't care about that shit. One day I just stole you. I snuck into your room and dressed you in this little jumper that I saved for. Then I took you to the park to show you off. There was this lady there, and when she saw us, she just simply melted. What a beautiful baby. He looks just like his mother. God, I was so proud. I was floating. Nana came. She caught up with us and snatched you from me. It's not his mom. It's his sister. Oh, fuck her. Forget about that shit, Les. I love you. You're the only one I ever loved. You don't understand. The lady had it right. She had it right. She had it right. What are you saying, Les? I was only 14 years old. What'd you expect me to do? Do you know how hard it was for me? All the guys in town looking at me, snickering, whispering, whore everywhere I went, whore. Just keep your fuck away from me, ladies. Please. Would I have played now? All right, I need a ruling immediately. Does it seem like these two have had sex before? They've definitely had sex before. Okay, so his justifiably getting super upset and kind of psychotic upon finding out the truth that she is in fact his mother, which we could kind of tell all the way along. Yeah. To the point when they start having that incestuous makeout section. Sex. Uh, wow. Freudian slot. Slut. Slit. <laughs> slot. Fuck. Um, sex. Or that very like uh, Oedipus uh, sexual like makeout session that they have going on there. Like while that is actually happening, I already got the chills where I'm like, oh, God, they are related. And I'm like, that that's his mom. And I'm like, they've done this before. I'm like, oh, God. And then I'm like, yay, Matt's going to be so grossed out. Uh, number one, I was grossed out. So you got the chills, huh? Is that what you're calling uh, boners now? Is the chills? But, I mean, it's fine if that's what we're going to go with. Well, it well, it is leaching the blood out of the rest of my body. So, yeah, that does <laughs> tend to send chills down my spine. <laughs> okay. I just wanted to make sure, you know, I never know anymore. Uh, <laughs> Incest does not automatically equal erect clip. <laughs> So anyway, uh, Troy runs out of the house into the woods screaming as one does when they find out that, you know, he has been boning his mother. Um, <laughs> except for Marty McFly. Yeah, except for Marty McFly. He does whatever whatever he needs to. Uh, he just is like, hey, your kids are going to like that in the future. So <laughs> um, we're in the woods later. Tanya, who's running through there, she keeps hearing different voices calling on her name. Pete gets to Christmas land and he finds Daryl dead. He's hung like in the cross or he, he's like crucified with a cross and stabbed into his heart. Pete then whispers not again and gets a gun. So then um, sis slash mom finds Troy in the woods but as she turns around it's actually Morty wearing Troy's clothing. She backs up against a tree and gets very much older, older, older until she dies. Uh, Richard goes out and he checks, he goes upstairs to check on Misty, but she's now possessed by Marty. The Marty doll starts, uh, moving in correlation with however Misty is moving. Misty starts moving the letters, um, on the board to say matricide. She accuses Rich of killing his mom, 
and we see uh we see a flashback where a young rich found his mom boning the dude and she uh most likely not her husband and she freaks and threw a glass at him and that's what cut his face that we, the cut we saw earlier in the movie she it actually she actually threw the glass near him and the ricochet of broken like a shard flew up and yeah, cut him but, but she's still she's i mean you're still throwing glass at a kid your own kid so i'm just saying probably not good by the way oh uh Angela, while she was downstairs, she saw, or Ashley downstairs, she saw the Morty doll start moving on its own, and it freaked her out. She ran. So now she's out in the woods. She finds Troy, and she's like, hey, something really bad's been happening. Well, he reveals something else. He reveals that he is the campus rapist, and he attacks her. But she's able to squirm and run away from him. She actually does a really good job of, like, kicking him in the face and fighting her way free. And it's a really long sequence, but they're just shortcutting things once again, where instead of <laughs> instead of us finding it out because, like, you know, he confesses it or it just kind of like some in some other way, they just end up making it be like a horrific attack on this poor yeah. girl. And like he just basically tells her and then attacks her. It's kind of haphazardly done. Yeah, I agree. Um, but you don't get a lot of time to think about it because it's immediately into this really uncomfortable fight and chase scene and attempted rape and both actors are selling it quite well uh it's yeah. it's a really uncomfortable sequence and it's shot and done rather well uh it's supposed <laughs> to make you feel uncomfortable and it very much does yes i get very uncomfortable with it so uh then we cut to um richard is now in the past again and he's uh his dad finally you know asks him how did he get the cut in his face how did he get a cut on his face and then we see the dad confronting the mom and we hear a gunshot and then we see dad burying the mom and the dad blames his son saying it's your fault and if you tell him what you saw here morty will get you morty will get you and we see morty um so anyway uh bad times there then rich and missy actually fight around the house she's trying to attack him and he launches her off the deck of the house and she falls to her death so uh, i'm sure that's rough yeah um, but then we see morty pop up out of her body in some kind of a weird fashion yes, we do we see morty pop out of her body uh and there you go um so uh yeah the possession where morty possesses her body and she attacks people like evil dead style for a good portion and sequence of this film is really fucking bizarre and then they just end it here and then bring morty back out with her death of falling off a balcony yeah so uh yeah and like you said marty leaves her body and then uh at this point troy catches up we cut to troy catching up to ashley they fight a little bit and as he rolls on the ground because he has no shirt on he gets bugs on him as he starts freaking out about the bugs on him she nails him right in the face of the giant log and that ends that 20 minutes and we're getting ready to go into the final all right so real quick uh we're seeing a lot more of the shortcutting where they're skipping to the end as fast as they can with a lot of these characters yeah. uh and and, you know, you get the sensation that there weren't actually bugs there, that uh, Morty and the fear is starting to move on to these various folks. But I think that maybe we didn't get the animation over top of him to where we could see what he was seeing. Or maybe they took that shortcut or maybe he really did have bugs on him and she just, you know, conked him in the skull before Morty came after them. You know, maybe they found yeah, another way. Be. Maybe they found another way to thin out the cast. Who knows? Yeah. But like <laughs> the way that the action is starting to happen and the cast is very quickly falling off off um you can tell that they are rushing towards the end here because like you said we have about 30 ish or so minutes maybe 40 at the most left and uh the film is just like oh we got to wrap like six storylines up and then this horror and the drama oh man we got to get moving yeah right no shit that's basically what uh, they're doing at this point it is yeah uh, the next, the final 20 minutes starts with Rinch running into Uncle Pete, and that's our next clip. Have you seen Tanya? Uncle Pete, it's my fault. She wasn't even with you. No, no. No. It's my fault about Mom. I caught her with another man, I told Dad, and he killed her. He killed her! I remember it, Uncle that's Pete! That's a lot of bullshit! There was only one man she loved, one true love in her life. No! Listen to me! She was always controlling me! I wanted her off my back, and I got her killed. I got her killed, Uncle Pete. You get that shrink crap out of your head. I got the truck. You get your stuff out of the car. Jesus Christ. Right? Jesus. Yeah, the film goes there. I mean, you can hear it in the actors' voices. They're really, really pushing for that emotion and that depth. And the film really tries to, to go there <laughs> with the yeah. drama aspects on it. I mean, and I like I said, you can you can tell me whether or not it works for you. Um, that doesn't matter to me. I'm just trying to point out the uh, gumption and the trying and, you know, really packing a whole lot of drama and story into it. It's all good stuff. 
Uh, kinda. So anyway, I, it's uh, normally <laughs> what you would want in your storytelling. Yes. Yes. Um. So okay. So then Pete goes inside, and Marty is kind of moving around. Rich finds Ashley, and we find out she has in fact killed Troy. Uh, Pete is now, we see him, Uncle Pete's washing his hands while staring at the bedspread and hearing the moans, and we see a tattoo on him. Well, then Rich tells Ashley that, uh... That tattoo's that important what, because that tattoo is the one that he that saw. the kid saw, yeah. yeah. We know that now. The film's telling yeah. us before anything else. Yeah. And, uh, we are then, uh, told that, uh, you know, Rich kind of tells her what, uh, the diametrics thing was all about. Uh... Or diamond metrics or whatever. And she's like, oh no, it's not your fault. Y- you know, you didn't do anything wrong. Uh, she says it's the opposite, that he's the victim, that he didn't do anything. And so, or, 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 all right. Uh, so. <laughs> Again, the psychology in this does not quite work right. And she's just basically trying to make her would be sort of could get back together, uh, fiance. If they're going to make it work, like you're kind of wondering if they're going to get back together after this or what's going on. But yeah. yeah, she tries to talk him down and maybe it doesn't work for you the way that they're delivering it. It doesn't work for right. me. Maybe it doesn't, it doesn't work, work for you. Yeah. So anyway, uh, then Rich goes to grab Pete because he knows Marty's still in there. And he sees the tattoo, and it was Pete all along who was sleeping with his mom, and it was also Pete's baby inside of her. Well, Pete starts yelling out about being a teller. He can't tell, he can't tell. And all of a sudden, Marty comes in. Well, Rich runs away. Marty addresses Pete, and pretty much makes Pete, after Pete tries to shoot him twice, makes Pete shoot himself in the face. Or in the in the mouth. Makes him kill himself. The actor who is in the makeup to playing Morty does a really good job of miming and pretending to be very wooden with yeah. their movements. And the sound effects do help. Uh, but the costume very clearly bends and moves like latex and not wood in a lot of sounds. Yeah. But you got to let it go. You just got to be like, well, they tried. They did what they could. But like the wider shots of the sequence where the actor is just moving like as wooden and stiff as possible. And, uh-huh. you know, like then the makeup really sells it. And in this sequence in particular, I bring it up because this is one of the best parts where the acting actually kind of overcomes some of the limitations of latex to emulate tree bark. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, Rich grabs Ashley. They run. We get a chase through the woods, and Rich finds the clearing that's in his dream. And then all of a sudden, Marty catches up to him and raises what I'm assuming is Rich's mom's zombie corpse and uh, to grab him. Then all of a sudden we see uh, Rich's younger self and the two grave diggers all show up. And uh, they, you know, uh, Rich, then he gives, the younger self gives that globe, the globe that Rich had, and he breaks it. He says the missing piece was on the inside. Rich then uses it, and all of a sudden the zombie goes away. Rich hugs his younger self, and the diggers and his, the diggers walk away. We see then Ashley is attacked by Marty, and uh, he uh, all of a sudden Tanya shows up, and Marty throws her off of him, and she lands in the water, but she's not as scared. She's getting ready to attack him again until Richard shows up. He tells Marty it's over. Just, it's all over. He knows everything now. It's over. Morty, you know, walks into the water, leaves everyone alone, and he walks away. Then we cut to Rich is talking to, to teacher Wes Craven, and that's our final clip. Oh, Richard. Hello. Hey. I, uh... I'm sorry about your spear. Yeah, well, I heard about the investigation. Well, we missed your class today. I, uh... I'm dropping out. I want you to be the first to know. Mind telling me why? I, uh... I found the missing piece all right. But I, uh... I lost a hell of a lot along the way. Also, I got a bunch of cops who want answers that uh, I don't have. I guess the quest for wholeness is not all it's cracked up to be. Well, it's a moment-to-moment thing, Richard. I mean, uh, you can't live now until you make your peace with then. Then what? Then now. You get to live now. 
Thank you. Yeah. Well, then we cut to the house is being sold, and this family's looking at it, but they lose their kid who has a soccer ball. He's kicking it. He kicks it, and he finds Morty, who has the ball. Kid asks if he's a good guy or a bad guy. Morty kicks the ball to the kid. Kid smiles. Roll credits. All right, so, uh... Yeah, um, the kid asking Morty, are you a good guy or are you a bad guy? Like, is Morty the first horror monster who really just wants to force you to work through your psychological issues? Yeah, and if you're not willing to, you die. Like, if you cannot face that which you fear most and realize that it doesn't define you, Morty will take you. Yeah, I think that's it. I mean, this is, it's so fucking ambitious and like... I want to, I want to like really bag on some of the aspects of it that I found distasteful, but like, I, I really enjoy so much of the stuff for what, like they're swinging for the widest fences and the most broadest term of fear and like the most out there definition of horror that they can come up with. And they're doing all this like sort of weird psychological stuff while at the same time trying to make us terrified of a fucking mannequin that just all of a sudden started animating, you know? Right. And the idea is that he's supposed to be magical because there was like a native American who carved it for them and put magic. Yeah. in it whenever he carved it and it was a mannequin they used in the store and any clothes they put on it would automatically sell out they said yeah. or something along those lines so it has yeah that's what they said in that one clip yeah. yeah so it has some kind of a power but then does that power then shift and start working with the psychological thing and then Morty decides that he likes it so now like he starts fucking with people's brains for the rest of their lives and if they can't face their fear then he is their worst enemy but if they can then he's their best friend because he helps them get over it like it's I don't know <laughs> like this this film definitely leaves me with a bunch of questions where I'm like I'm not quite sure what it is that I'm seeing and like I'm getting a real like I just watched Twin Peaks the TV show in the 90s vibe from this yeah, right? as I'm yeah. watching it you know what I mean like I'm like really fucking confused and I'm not sure how I feel about what it is that I just watched but I think I kind of like it and like I really I feel like it's heavily influenced by Twin Peaks right like this show or this yeah movie, it's something it? like that yeah yeah like it, it has a Twin Peaks feel like it's like trying to channel Freddy Krueger via a Twin Peaks lens <laughs> is, yeah, is right. what they're kind of doing with this film and it's really off-putting and kind of hard to put your finger on and I'll tell you this the first time I watched this in like the 90s is like a teenager with a fucked up tape where I just all of a sudden jumped to like halfway in basically the part where the horror starts happening and like Santa's Village on is all I could see yeah you know and uh, and and still wasn't and, and like i really i clearly forgot the movie and i completely discounted it and i was like majorly bummed about it i think i probably even demanded my money back you know the next day i went to the video store and demanded my money back because the tape was fucked up <laughs> you know yeah and like that's probably why i forgot about this movie but watching it now um just by having it like just sort of pop into my life by being part of this package that i just happened to buy because it was the only way to get a certain title that i definitely wanted and i couldn't get it any other way you know like it's kind of a pleasant surprise to have it on the show for this there was a lot of stuff to talk about there's a lot to dig in with on this and it's really fucking ambitious but like you just you see them like really really swinging and they they just foul tip it i think at the end it just yeah. i mean like it's not a strike you know <laughs> It's, it's yeah it's not a it's not a home run it's not even a triple or a double it possibly could be a, a weak signal signal but single but it's like a choppy one you know <laughs> this like the only way you're safe is on an error throw i'm just saying yeah like it's so close it's so close it really really tries and it does a yeah. lot of interesting stuff and there's some really interesting visual flair and i will tell you this i see a lot of promise in all of the actors that are in the film i see a lot of promise in the storytelling i see a lot of promise in the cinematography and what they did with some of the direction for what they had but i definitely it was really ambitious for what they had to be able to execute it monetarily speaking and there's way too much fucking story to be told uh this is like two movies in one you could have split this up with like fewer people and still you know got a, got a good solid like hour and maybe 25 minute you know runtime with like two couples and maybe one outlier you know yeah. you drop the fucking campus rapist subplot you drop a bunch of stuff that really doesn't forward the story as much and you could have a really tight really solid film with this yeah oh yeah i agree but uh, i think it's a good premise but yeah, I don't know if they landed this one. Yeah, this is a uh, rife territory for a good remake, I think. You know, yeah, they could really I think so. they could really take another crack at this and really try and do something with Morty and, you know, make it more than just, you know, somebody carved carved it with magic. You maybe know. and maybe just like 
you know, drop the whole campus rapist thing altogether. Oh, yeah, definitely drop the campus rapist stuff. That did not enhance the in any way, no. shape, or form. Uh, the last thing that I definitely want to say is that there just had to have been some magic in that old stovepipe hat they found. <laughs> because when they placed it on Morty's head, he began to murder them all. <laughs> oh, my God, yeah. <laughs> uh, and let's fuck Morty it. the Woodman. <laughs> would sell all of your fucking clothes. Here's the ending <laughs> Legion podcast ad. Yeah. If you enjoyed this show, then make sure you check out the other great shows on the Legion podcast network, like Cinema PsyOps, Cinema Beef, Devour the Podcast, Duncan and Bo Come Correct, Exploding Heads Horror Movie Podcast, Friday the 13th, Get Slayed, The Hell Ming Power Hour, Hello, This is the Doom Show, Hero Hero Ghost Show, Kill the Cast, Underwater Kaiju from Outer Space, Jerry Hates Action, Legion After Dark, Mental Health, Obsessive Cinema, Discourse, Pick 6 Movies, The Podcast by the Cemetery, The Podcast on Haunted Hill, The Psycho Semantic Podcast, Rick Radio, House of Wax, Dude Looks Like the 80s, Rabbit and Red Radio, The Shade Cast, Short Bus Cinema, Two Drink Minimum Commentaries, The VD Clinic, Who Will Survive Horror Podcast, and Which Versus the Doomsday Clock. With such a widespread of shows, there is guaranteed to be a niche for you to fall in love with. Horror, politics, movies, books, sex, music, commentaries, health, video games, kaiju, action, news, comedy, and opinions that would most likely get you killed in some parts of the world. We are proud to bring you some of the best podcasting in the world. Check us out at www.legionpodcast.com iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, and any other dark corner of the internet where podcasts can be found. I gotta be careful. I'm gonna get lulled away by that fucking siren voice. That's Miranda Sex Garden is the band, and oh my god, there are some amazing female vocalists in that group. Like you just, you would not believe. I've played uh, some Miranda Sex Garden actually before on the show. It's been many, many a moon, but this is definitely something that I probably would have been listening to at the time that this film was out. <laughs> I fancied myself a goth around this time. I will. Admit. Uh, I was more. You were gothing it up. Uh, well, I was more of like a punker goth, you know, like yeah. where I just wore all black, but it was like all about the spikes and shit. But yeah. Of course. Yeah, yeah. and I'm sure that's going to get some alternative photography out there. I I would hope so. (laughs) If you'd like to find all the previous instances where I've made reference to Miranda Sex Garden or just even started the whole pirate radio edit for our Patreon, if you want to know where that got started, you're going to find the answers to all of these questions at legionpodcast.com forward slash cinema dash psyops. We're also available as our meme repository on Instagram, cinema underscore psyops there. Every meme that I've repurposed for the people is available there at Instagram. All the repurposed memes. We also have our Facebook group, Cinema Psyops, which is aptly named for the show so that you can easily find it there in the groups. Uh, It's a fun place to come hang out and share your various memes and uh, my god you guys are getting out of control uh, I'm getting group quality fucking warnings left and right you monsters really <laughs> yeah <laughs> there's some crazy shit so like uh, I'm gonna try and remove things and like tell you what it was that the group quality warning was all about whenever I remove it but Jesus fucking Christ you 
you guys and gals out there in uh, Cinema Sonhop's Facebook monsters. group. What are you doing to us? You trying to get our group fucking removed? <laughs> you, you monsters. <laughs> I'm actually almost kind of proud because a lot of this shit is from like years ago. So I'm like wondering why it's oh. happening, but it's happening. Yeah, it's happening. Well, yeah. And, and then some of it's like from two weeks ago as well. And I'm not going to name names or shame anyone, Matt Sayop, but you know, it just kind of happened. Mother hell. <laughs> Actually, Matt is available as Matt Psyop in that you can tag him for things, but he doesn't go on the social medias as much. I am available there as Court Psyops for, you know, messaging and uh, Facebook group interaction and or, well, not timeline tagging because I've, you know, made that to where nobody can do that anymore because one bad apple spoiled it for the bunch. Uh-oh. <laughs> I'm not going to call out anybody apples. by name Matt Psyop. Uh, <laughs> Motherfucker, what? <laughs> <laughs> you can email feedback to Matt and tell him to stop ruining things for Court Psyop Matt at gmail. <laughs> Well, that's never going to happen. You can email feedback to court. Tell them to stop being such a sensitive little snowflake. Send them a psyops court at gmail.com. <laughs> you can also tweet a couple of tweets to a couple of twats on the porn bot filled haven that is known as Twitter. I'm at court underscore psyop there, and he is at psyop Matt. And while you're out there tweeting your tweets to your twats and making sure that OnlyFans backs up everything that it just said and changes it all right back to the way it used to be, but it might have been too late, kick the fuck out of these corporate assholes making money off of your back and this week and make it your bitch. Start rolling. Rolling. One, two, three. Yeah, 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 yeah. You hear that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. All right, I'm still waiting on your fucking clips to zip up and sh- download. Jesus. They're not even, most of them aren't even that long. It doesn't matter. Google's API always fucking sucks for whatever it's trying to do because it wants to scan each individual file and anything over a certain megabyte it can't do, and then it abandons it, and then it has to notate that it's doing it while it's zipping it. And it's extremely serious bloatware, and I can't believe that their engineers make as much as they do. That is the constant thing I hear about Google. <laughs> it's seriously like, I can't believe like when you look at like what they'll pay for people and the product that still comes out. It's like, well, fucking Jesus. So uh, I dug out all of our retro video game systems that we've been lovingly storing for a few years, but, you know, unable to get rid yeah. of. Uh-huh. Nice. What'd you have? Uh, we have a PlayStation 2, a wow. N64, love a it. Super NES, a, love do it. a refurbished original NES that uh, got new chips and stuff thrown in it and a little bit of love that somebody bought me. For, I think Jeremy bought me for my birthday ages and ages ago. Have sex with it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and a Wii, a Nintendo Wii, which... <laughs> the Wii, yeah. Now, On occasion, we still break out our Wii. Now, the thing about the Wii, though, is deep down somewhere in the memory card in the Wii is buried a copy of Splatterhouse, which is one of my favorite games of all time. <laughs> Nice. That I downloaded to that Wii ages and ages ago. So if that still works and I can still get to that game, it's going to be worth it. The last TV in our house that still has the yellow, red, and white RCA cords for video and audio, like that uh-huh. old school super dead connection yeah. that no TV has anymore. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, the last TV that has it is an old plasma screen, so it's going to have burn in from the video games. But I mean, I have no use for this TV otherwise. Yeah. So fuck it. Yeah. I mean, I could hook it up. It has HDMI and everything, and it's 10. 
1080p that's all great and everything but someone gave me this tv years ago and i think mm-hmm. they would be very happy to know i'm playing retro video games on it i would think so well i i had to laugh i just haven't gotten any chance to break into it i just downloaded the original quake to my xbox so i haven't played that in fucking forever you know for my nephews uh, for Christmas every year, I get them. I get them a super gift where it's like their Christmas birthday combined. Yeah, and I pay for them to have the Xbox, like the big Xbox subscription thing, where you get like yeah, free, that's what I have. Free downloads and everything. I pay for an entire year yeah. for it for them. Nice. Yeah, I mean, dude, that thing. Like, I have so many games from that fucking thing. Yeah. Well, they that, seem to really be happy about it, and my youngest it's, nephew really, really, really was like, like wanted to be old enough that he could get it too. <laughs> Yeah. But my sister yeah, was like, no, not yet. Just another year or two. It's next level shit. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to hear me cough on occasion because I'm trying to fight this cold that's been going fucking around everywhere. Yeah, there's fucking rhinovirus in Omaha up on top yeah. of everything else. Well, because fucking school just started and kids are germ factories. So. Yeah, that's absolutely true. All right, I'm moving the <laughs> clips over right now. Hey, that was that noise. Did you hear it? That, that was it. That I heard was, it. That was the clips going, we're here. Weird. I think I'm going to take that out. I probably would. <laughs> <laughs> Just on uh, grounds of like good taste, as in like that's not a good joke. <laughs> no, <laughs> you're tired. You're fighting off a cold. You weren't expecting to record today, but that's how we're gonna <laughs> roll here on Cinema Psyops. I'm good to go for I know. I had to get my uh, desk all together because it was just in pieces today. So like the whole station. So. <laughs> all right. Well, I'm good to go. If you're on, you ready to roll? Yep. All right. Yep. Here we go. I'm your host, Court, who fucked up the show count, but we'll fix it right now. It actually is 316, so I posted it wrong, and now I have to fix that. (laughs) Well, see? You're the one fucking up here. Not me. (laughs) Outtakes, outtakes, outtakes. Hey, did you mean to text love you too to me? Was that an accident? I hope it was, right? I'm sorry, what? Did you mean to text I love you too to me? No, that was the wrong chat. (laughs) (laughs) I meant to text that. (laughs) Oh, that's awesome. I'm going to include this, but I'm going to take your wife's name out. I'll just be Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. the wife. That's awesome. I thought thought it was because I was digging into you for being late. And I just really, you know, I was more like, like, I wasn't getting an explanation. So I was like, let's use that on the air, right? That's all I wanted. Because I knew it was going to be a good story, whatever it was. just two bucks a month. You get a pair of movie commentaries exclusive to Patreon. And for $5. That's fucking hilarious. I'm eating now while the Patreons have, or while the ads are available. All right, awesome. Everything okay over there? Yeah. I'm going to make sure I keep my headphones on, just like when I listen to this trailer. Imagine if you will. It's technically true. I only will listen to this trailer with headphones on. It's going to be a field session. That's the wrong clip. Jennifer. You're not used to our ways, are you, dude? Well, that's one. That's the one that's marked one. Yeah, that's the one that's marked one. Oh, is this Jennifer? How is this Jennifer? I don't know. Hold on. Make sure. Hang on. Hang on. Don't do anything. All right. All right. Okay, I've got seven total clips. Is that right? That's right. Okay. (laughs) Come on. Okay, somehow, I don't know how, but somehow... The clips from last week just in my file system, like, did an undo for just the first six. I have no idea how. All right. <laughs> yeah, that was a weird one. I must have somehow fat fingered like a control Z type situation or something. Or Apple well, okay, Z. Okay, thank God it was something I added in there. <laughs> no, I think you're fine because now I have a total of seven. They're all time stamped from within 20 minutes of us starting to record. And here we go. There's a horse dancing with a guy underneath the street light that's flashing red and green periodically. Motherfucker. Again? It's brilliant. I have no idea what's going on, Matt. You can't make the same movie all the time, can you? <laughs> and uh, is that a, a horse dancing with a little person? Because what the hell's going on in this movie? I don't know what's happening, but it's brilliant. <laughs> hey, I'm just uh, over I... here eating Cheetos and appropriating culture, bro. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I didn't have time to put on the fucking... Uh, mannequin up against your window i'm too busy moving over here no i wasn't gonna complete that sentence uh anyway that was almost a goddamn clip damn it <laughs> although we could have gotten a clip on you on that one about appropriating culture <laughs> yeah sure i mean that would actually make a good clip you're not wrong just over here eating uh, cheetos and appropriating culture <laughs> i'm just saying it's a good one <laughs> my mind would have been way bad <laughs> That one would have been for just in here, and then we never repeat it, and we feel bad right after it's said. I could tell. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, it was. It wasn't gonna go well. Um, 
Sorry, I'm dying here. Hold on. Oh, I did post in the group a little like a uh, meme thing, like where I heard your story and it was one of those like now I feel bad things, but in the group. Oh, nice. All right. The revenge <laughs> of the nerds is not a defense. That is still sexual assault. Yes. Um, God, we're never going to do that movie, right? <laughs> I cannot tell you that for sure. Well, oh, Jesus Christ, that's going to be rough. <laughs> Alright, um... You will not do that movie for free, how about that? No, no, my god, that might be for the best. Uh... <laughs> she said, I mean, you're still throwing glass at a kid, your own kid, so I'm just saying, probably not good. Yeah, because he's he's uh, coitus interruptus, I kind of think that she's somewhat justified in her anger. What? Wait, what the fuck, dude? No, she's... Alright, listen, you're, you're... Okay, you're done. <laughs> so anyway... <laughs> I'm gonna move that to the outtakes, that was fun. <laughs> Say Morty, so Morty for me once here. What? Say Morty for me once here. Morty. Been saying Marty. <laughs> if I've been saying Marty, yeah. Morty. It's, it, I have it in my notes as Morty. Yeah. I don't know why I just start saying Marty. You're just fucking uh, tired. It's fine. Go ahead. Yeah. out of these corporate assholes making money off of your back and this week and make it your bitch all right i guess we're out all right we are out all right man <laughs> you go ahead and stop I on will your get side this out to you way fast and then i am going to bed all right did, <laughs> did you stop yeah i'm stopped okay <laughs> i need to have you say that so that i can stop the episode with it damn it oh sorry <laughs>